and we are recording. <laughs> I know it might seem like it's not getting us, but everybody's in the shot. All right. <laughs> um, well, welcome to, well, I can say hi to the camera. Welcome to another great edition of a rapid fire radio presentation for Frank Lawson production with Rebel Communication. Yep, the old Reb is here, and we're with the band in Deadwood, South Dakota at the Grand Mountain. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. grand, more or less. Yeah. 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 Sam Morrison's band here. Sam is with us and his band members, and it's just a treat for us, I'm telling you. Yeah, we uh, we love having you guys here, and, uh, you know, we're in their bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're, yeah, we're in their fancy. private quarters. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure is all ours, believe me. Yeah, so, really so we got Sam here, who's the lead vocal. Yes, sir. And Lead guitar player too, or co-guitar player? Co-guitar player, okay. And who we got over I'm, here? I'm Carl Sanger, and okay. the saxophone man. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. He has great sax <laughs> yep. every night. I do. I do. <laughs> Plays great sax. There's always room for some sax. Just said Jello. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then who? I'm Bart Robley, and I'm the drummer. Okay. Yeah. And okay. of course, nobody can see, but. Rebecca of Sunnybrook <laughs> Farm, and that is her radio name. That's what we call her. She <laughs> is color. here. She's so right you can there. giggle and laugh for the camera or whatever you want. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, we are honored to have you guys here. This is my 200th interview. Oh, wow. And, um, I, I picked you guys to, uh, I appreciate that. I picked you guys to do the interview with because it was something special. And we've been waiting for this for the last six months since we chatted with you on the phone. Great. Not too often we actually get a chance to actually talk to somebody face to face as well, let alone you know on the phone, of course, right. like it always is. Right. But uh, but so we do appreciate you guys. Oh, no us, problem. You know, give us a VIP treatment. Um, so, what brings you to Deadwood tonight, other than just uh, wanting to play a concert for us? Well, that's what takes Deadwood. We want to play concerts for people. <laughs> 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 but I mean, like like like, uh, did it take a little while to to get? Well, we've, we've been working. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a new agent that I started working with that, that books the Deadwood Grand, and, and this is one of the shows that he hooked us up with. So this is the beginning of a little mini tour that we're doing. We've got this one tonight, and then we're going to Westminster, Colorado tomorrow. And okay. then we've got uh, a couple in Parker, Colorado, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And that'll be it before we head back to Southern California. Wow. So three three in Colorado and one in South Dakota. Yeah. Uh, too bad you couldn't have uh, did something at the uh, Civic Center because we're always looking for, you know, we're always looking for acts at the Civic Center. Well, next or, time, man, I didn't know it was there, so now we do. We'll <laughs> we always talk to them. They also have a thing called, uh, what was it, uh, Hot Summer Nights or whatever? Hot Summer Nights, mm -hmm. which they they have bands right on Main Street of Rapid City, South Dakota. Yeah. And uh, it's it's all of, it's a pretty big thing that's been going on. I mean, they draw a crowd. Well, send me the info. I'll call. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah, because I think they have a lot of local bands that, that come in, but, you know, why not have something that's a little different, yeah. a, little, a little bit more unique? You know, it's not local, but it feels like local because everybody likes the same type of music around here. Sounds like that. Right. That's cool. But sure. uh, how long have you guys been in the music business? <laughs> yeah, let me ask that question. How long have we been playing or how long has it really how been? How long has it been? Or like, like what decided or what made you decide that you, first of all, want to be a Bob Seger tribute band? And secondly, just wanted to start producing music and going on doing concerts and stuff. Well, I guess the, the best would be kind of back to the beginning. The band actually started, I actually started the Sam Morrison Band as a country band. Okay. And we did this back in the 90s, back when Garth Brooks was big and, and all that was going on. And then uh, the country thing started taking a, a dive in Southern California anyway. And, and a lot of the clubs closed, so there was, you know, 100 bands to play in three places. Oh, I decided I need to make more money than waiting my turn. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So I started a Southern Rock band and recruited new guys, and I got Bart here, uh, our bass player, Greg Kasparian, and uh, Steve Sinker, our guitar player. Okay. And uh, we started the new version of the Sam Morrison Band. It was a Southern Rock show. And uh, we played a lot of biker events and a lot of... My kind of stuff, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. as we'd do these biker shows, we'd play our original stuff, but we'd also do covers, you know, because you know, they want you to play for you know four hours or whatever. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Turn the Page is a huge biker song. And uh, so as the, we started doing Turn the Page, they're like, oh, my gosh, you sound just like Bob Seger. Can you play Night Moves? Can you play? <laughs> and so, you know, everybody wanted us to play more and more Bob Seger songs. So we, uh, a buddy of mine was in this band, Hotel California. Okay. It's an Eagles tribute. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, the tribute bands are the cool thing right now. So I, I told the guys, let's, let's do it. 
set a seeker and see what happens, and it just took off. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And that, uh, so it made you decide that this is what we got to do. This is, a, this is a chapter in my life where I got to show what I can do, or show that I can be a, almost as good, if not better, than Bob Seeger. Money. <laughs> <laughs> Money. Money. Yeah, so you can't, you can't forget about the most important part, right? No, well, I love the music. Bob Seeger's the, in my opinion, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And the music is just classic. People love it. And he... Well, he just finished a tour right now, but at the time we did it, he hadn't toured in years and years and years. Oh. And so when we, uh, when we went out and started doing it, I mean, people were hungry for his music live. Oh, sure. And so we just, you know, we were happy to fill that void. Oh, absolutely. And what would you, uh, I guess, when it came to picking band members and who you wanted in your band, did it, were both these guys with you already when you were in the country band? Or? No, no. When the country band, uh, Bart was with me at the very end of the country band. Okay. Um, but it's different kind of players for different kinds of music, you know what I mean? So sure. when we switched over to the rock stuff, I wanted to get guys who are a little more rock heavy. And Bart came from a heavy metal background. He kind of yeah. looks like he's like, <laughs> like Metallica. And so, <laughs> so, so, so did, uh, it gets it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, our guitar player, and Greg, the, they, they were all came from heavy metal bands. They, yeah. they did the whole L.A., you know, Hollywood circuit, playing all of those clubs and sure. stuff. So when we put it together, you know, they were, they were a, a metal band, and I was a country guy, and yeah. so we kind of met in the middle at Southern Rock, and it wow. just kind of clicked. Yeah, that's a little, uh, imagine a heavy metal country band. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be something, huh? It was, <laughs> you know, the, the, the beauty about the whole thing, too, is is not only did it the band come together well in jail, but it, individually, it, it stretched us as musicians. You know, each one of us got better, because, you know, we had to learn new styles, we had to do different things, and make a lot of changes in our own playing personally. And then that the same thing kind of goes on those lines as far as the, the Bob Seger thing too. The Bob Seger thing, you know, it, it, Sam coined the phrase when we were recording uh, the first Bob Seger record. He said, you know, the stuff is complex simplicity, and I love that, you know, because the songs are, you know, it's not rush or progressive rock. They're just great tunes, and to pull the, the parts off to make the songs work. Each individual member enhances the other, right? So if you, you can't overplay and you can't underplay. And so it made us better players, you know, and I think that that's one of the things that I enjoy the most about it. And it also filled a niche in the market because Bob Seger wasn't releasing his music on iTunes. When iTunes came out, there was a big gap and his, you didn't feel his music. I, I can't speak for Bob Seger, but yeah. basically we, we are to understand that he felt it should be available as an album not individual in the 99 cent iTunes type of a way. Sure. And so he, for many years, would not allow his music to be on iTunes. So Sam, you know, was, was contracted by Tiger. Yeah, it, it wasn't, yeah, I, this guy called me one day and uh, he's like, yeah, I'm a music producer and I'd like to record your Bob Seger stuff. And I'm like, well, why? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I buy Bob Seger's records. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, Bob Seger isn't on iTunes and, you know, there's a huge void there. so. We, uh, like Carl said, so uh, they brought us in, and the guy produced Madonna and, and Pink Floyd. And, I mean, he was a real record producer there in yeah. LA. And so when we recorded it, it was it was good. I mean, it wasn't just you know a bar band version of these songs. He used all of his years of, of expertise to actually recreate the the tracks and make them um, sound sonically just you know modern. So yeah. that it would be like it was recorded today. And uh -huh. uh, loved it. I mean, you know, anywhere in the world somebody wanted old time rock and roll, they, they got us. Huh. And uh, it's it's been a good thing. Well, I noticed that his music also is not on Spotify. That's what we've been using, you know, the popular Facebook music app is what it is. Yeah. For anybody that don't know what Spotify is, we should know by now. And we found all your music and everything. Couldn't find anything Bob Seger, you know, I mean, you you came very close to obviously being Bob Seger related because you're, you know, you're a tribute and everything. But I don't know why Bob won't release his stuff on well, yeah, I think a lot of it's what Carl said. I mean, you know, he's one of the few people in the music business that, that really got it. And, you know, he owns all of his masters. He has full control of his music, where a lot of the other bands, you know, the record companies own everything. And I totally understand he wants to keep control of it, and I think that's that's a good thing. Yeah. And, you know, again, we're not trying to, in any means, diminish anything from him or, or take anything away from him. Um, we're just, uh, like I said a long time ago, the way that I look at what we're doing is, is we're kind of a Bob Seger franchise. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, we're, yeah. we're, you know when he can't play all over the world all the time. He, you know, he's not always touring. So, you know, we kind of fill.
fill in that void. And then what happens is when people listen to us play, you know, it just reminds them of how great he was and how great he is. And then they, they buy his records again anyway. It just makes people remember his music even more, I think. And that's and that's kind of what we're trying to do with it. I mean, it's it would be one thing to like to, to, to go do something and do it just for the money. When I said that earlier, I was oh, completely yeah. well, kidding. Obviously. You know, I, I love this music. I grew up playing it. And when we decided to do the Bob Seger tribute, I was really fortunate in the fact that I didn't have to learn anything. <laughs> I gave these guys and said, here, learn this note for note. But I already knew it because I've been playing it since I was 10 years oh, yeah. old. I learned how to play guitar by learning the, the, how to play Fire Down Below and how to learn playing Main Street. That's what, you know, I cut my teeth on a lot of that stuff. And so, um, again, to me, it's just recreating what he does is, is just, again, I, it, trying to pay tribute. A lot of tribute bands that you go and see, this is one of the things that I think is very distinct about what we do as, as opposed to a lot of other tribute bands, in that we have always been, from the very beginning, an original band. The Sam Morrison Band is who we are and what we do. Yeah. And we, you know, we write our own songs, we have our own albums, and we put that out. Turn the Page is a tribute show that we do, and we do it in tribute to him. We don't dress up in wigs, we don't wear costumes yeah. and, and, you know, paint uh, our yeah. faces or, or do anything crazy like that, like a lot of these tribute bands do. Sure. What we do is, you know, it's it's the Sam Morrison band playing his music. Okay. And, again, paying tribute to one of the greatest songwriters and singers ever. And I think that's, you know, what Sam, you know, just to elaborate on that, I think that it, it is, you know, I mean, we have a lot of respect for him, you know, I mean, so, so doing the tribute, it's just that, it's like, you know, thank you for the music. I guess. He's my hero. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. And the the songs. I mean, what I like about the music, the Bob Seger, you know, side of the music is is uh, like all you know lyrically. You listen to the lyrics of all of the songs, and you can relate to it. You know, you can go, you know, I've been there. I've you know, I've done sure. that, or or I want to do that. You know, I mean, it's something that you can relate to. It's not it's not something that's a fantasy or something that you know. You it's, it's real blue collar, been there, done that, you know, huh. you know, strong work ethic music, and it's fantastic, and so it's it's just so much fun to play it. It really is. So, so like, so like when it comes to like love and Bob Seger, like I mean, do you, I mean, do you have a collection of his music going back to his very beginning? I've got or? everything he's ever done. Okay, <laughs> yeah. from his early early days to like his last yeah, final or whatever. He's ever done. At the end of the day, it's about the voice. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sam's voice oh. is uncanny, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just uncanny at how close uh, of a sound. And, and, and Sam was told so many times, you sound just like Bob Seger, you know, finally. Yeah. And this tribute thing just started to catch fire. And for, for many people in the industry, they thought <clears throat> it wasn't going to stick around. But it's not just sticking around. The recession hit, and the tribute thing gave uh, communities that couldn't afford the real deal during that time still gave them great experiences. And now not only is it sticking around, but in some cases people prefer the tribute over uh, the act or the, the acts aren't touring anymore. Right. So yeah. you know, so it's 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 here to stay really. Well and kinda of what happens with us too is, is we've got we've we've actually developed a fan base of, of you know Sam Morrison bands or turn the page fans that um, you know they want our versions of the songs because they know oh. us and they build that connection with us where they maybe not, you know, with the original artists. A lot of the kids growing up, you know, they never got a chance to see Bob Seger. But they know old-time rock and roll. You yeah. Know? They know these songs. Mm -hmm. They hear it on the and radio yeah. all the time. Yeah, right. second so, most so played when we song it, on jukeboxes of all time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you know, when we do it, it gives them an opportunity to connect, too. You know? Internet radio is the way of the future, and we're here mm -hmm. to bring it. Mm -hmm. And we're, even though there's thousands of Internet stations out there, Folks don't know about it yet. They're confused a little bit. Well, we're educating them. And, you know, in order for the Sam Morrison band to have a niche in the market, I equate this back to when the 50s radio stations took off. Well, we're seeing that now, but only we have the technology to get it out there quicker, faster, mm -hmm. and get the niche in the market for, the, like, the Sam Morrison band. Because I like that kind of stuff. You guys are so fantastic. Oh. Well, that's I why I, I love you to thank you guys song. completely, thank too. So I mean, because a lot of the attention that we've garnered has been because of the tribute show. But you guys have listened to our original music, and you guys yeah. are promoting oh. it. And we appreciate that yeah. a lot. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, we're just a small stage when we started back in September of uh, last year. The whole idea, I don't know if we ever told you the story, but since we got the time, we'll tell you a little story about us a little bit. We worked together at a place called Pilot. Are you familiar with that as far as truck stops go? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he was the, uh, what were you, the maintenance guy? I was the maintenance, maintenance guy, guy, and then I worked at Subway. Well, weird mix of characters, of course, but he found out that I did radio. In fact, at one time, he 
this is when he when I was doing a show on K Tech with the state or college station was Didn't even know him, yeah. Yeah, didn't even know me at all. And when he found out that I did radio and where I did it for, you know, where I worked at the time, he was pretty impressed by that. But we had a lot in common so we decided to get together and start doing some shows. And the we young guy and the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you pick it, right? Yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. Yin and yang. I don't know if we ever say our stuff, but our, you know, we, we actually improv a lot of stuff we do. Yeah. Let alone the freedom stuff or the entertainment stuff. When it comes right down to it, we improv most of the time. Especially during our K-Tech days, you know. But anyway, a rapid fire just started because, you know, we, you know I read from him, you know, he's, he's my landlord as well. And so we built a studio in, in his house and. That's all. Didn't cost that much, <laughs> but we we want to keep the passion going because we own our own stuff. We don't, you know, we don't have, are not in control. Or nobody's in control of what we do. Right. Only us. You know? And there's no traffic to get to work. No, no, no not really. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's walk one, one but it's a lot next. of fun. <laughs> and to live the adventure, to be sitting here right now with the Sam Morrison band, yeah. it's an amazing thing, man. And oh, you guys, thank are, you. We, we appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you. This, this is That's great, man. This is, right there. this is really nice. Well, really I mean, it, it's, it's nice to know that we were actually the only, you know, which is really weird. I mean, I figured you guys would have had some type of press over here from some radio station in Rapid City or, or Sturgis or wherever. But we're the only ones that have came to. Well, we appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it, so it man. Much. We really so, it's awesome. Little, really little, really little station uh, with a big band, you know. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, and you, you know, you guys are just like anything, you know. I mean, you're, you're going to build your brand and your market. And oh, yeah. keep, keep building it up. Same as we are. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 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 We'll all grow together. All work wanna, together. I, I want to throw in one thing that Carl touched on a minute ago. Kind of yeah. go, go back to the tribute thing really quick about what you said about the voice, about Sam's voice. Mm -hmm. and And, you know, it's very true. I mean, uh, I've been playing drums behind Sam for 16 years now. I've been all over the world with the guy, and I would know his voice anywhere. I mean, I he'll he'll come home from the studio sometimes, you know, call me up the next day. Hey, dude, you got to hear this thing I cut, you know. And it may be a you know for a commercial or for a movie or something. And it's 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 a different style of music, and sometimes it's way out there. Like, wow, I never thought of that, but it really, you know. How did you figure out to do that, Sam? You know, I mean, he really stretches himself, and I love that. But his voice, immediately, I know it. Well, we were in the studio doing the first Turn the Page record, and there was one song in particular. You know, I could always tell it was Sam singing, but he does sound so much like the guy. But there was one song in particular that I, we would A, B it, and I'd be like... <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I mean, like, and, and so it's the only time it ever happened, but there was it was on Roll Me Away. Every time at the very beginning of the song, I was like, is that Bob Seger? That's Sam. I mean, it's, yeah. he, he really does. He really, he he does really, and he doesn't, and that's, a, that, again, I mean, he, he, he doesn't really try. It's, he just, the guy sings and sounds like Bob Seger. You know, it's, so. it's uncanny, man. We'll get it's, confused on, on tour. Uh, Sam will play something through, you know, uh, the, the stereo, and we're listening. And I would say, this guy, and, and it's actually him. We played, one night we were playing in, uh, um, it was down, down in Oklahoma, down way, way down right by Arkansas. We did this casino down there, and we got done with the show. And this guy came up and goes up to Sam and he goes, Mr. Seeger, I love your music. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get your autograph and a picture? And Sam goes, yeah, sure, you know what? Not Bob Seeger, I'm Sam Morrison, and we just did a joke. The guy, the guy yeah, he, wouldn't believe him. He, he, be, he wouldn't believe me. Yeah, he actually had got, the I think he kind of got a little bit upset. He's like, what are you trying to tell me you're not Bob Seeger? I know you're Bob Seeger. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. You're, you're, you don't want the whole world to know you're down here, but you just want to make a start up. I understand. But yeah. I'm like, oh, what, okay, guy, you know, whatever. Bob's awesome. Really <laughs> awesome. That that would happen. Happen. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. song, uh, of course, you guys remember the Beverly Hills Cop, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys have performed Shakedown before? We've recorded that. Oh, we we played have it. A, we have a... Uh, we have, have it. Yes, Okay, I, I guess I've never heard your version of Shakedown. Ours is a before. little different than the way he did it. We, yeah. uh, on the Beverly Hills Cop version, it, it's really techno, that Axel S, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. If you listen to the way we did it, we did it more like the way Bob Seger would do it live, where it's, it's a rock band playing that same song. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if you get a chance, if you play yeah, that one, I, I, yeah. I think it came out really good. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll bring it up on the playlist. It's on there, and it's an awesome. It's it's just as good as anything else that you guys do. It's fantastic stuff. 
Oh, so, you, so you don't really... I can't, you know, I am just, you know, I, I'm always searching for this music that's not rotated music. We find yeah. Sam Morrison's band, you guys, and uh, I sat there and I said, these guys are just incredible. I'm going to I'm gonna put them on the playlist and we're just going to get this thing rolling, you know? And I, I said, it would be awesome to talk to these guys. See, and I only said this once. And he's the he's the interview guy. Yes. <laughs> oh, we're surprising me. And then he, I come in the studio and I got Sam Morris. You gotta be kidding. Are you going to talk to Sam? Yep. Uh, okay. I'm surprised. Yeah. 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 Doing it lately, it seems like. We'll wait to hear the new stuff too. Sam's oh, got lots of new wait. stuff. So you guys yep. are coming out with a new album? Yeah. Okay. Oh, a couple new albums. Can you talk yeah. about it a little bit or hush hush? Because I know a lot of a lot of people when they come over and do stuff, they go, oh, we can't talk about it. Well, yeah, we can say that's what we can't say. That's understandable, too. Yeah, yeah, I've, come with, I've come up with a really cool concept that nobody else has done before. Okay. If you can imagine nobody's ever done anything. Yeah. I, but, but this is something that I've never heard of anybody else doing. And and I don't want to give too much away because I don't want anybody to beat me. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. All oh, our millions of viewers out there. Rather than <laughs> it only takes yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Internet yeah. radio. I was just going to say, it only takes one. in out there, you're just going to have to tune into us now because Sam has fixed it, so you're going to have to. Yeah, that's right. It's <laughs> called a tease. Teaser, right? So how about this? Do you know what the release date is? Right now we're still recording a bunch of the tracks, so I mean, it, I I would hope it would be out by the end of the year. And will it be on Spotify? Like Absolutely. Oh, oh, yeah. We can't oh, wait oh, then. Yeah. Now, uh, when, it, when it comes, and I've asked a lot of other musicians this too, so I'm just going to ask you guys this question. When it comes to releasing your music via the internet, how, how long does it take to get your stuff from album to MP3? To when I when I release something strong, it was up online within three days wow. oh. of me finishing it. Oh, wow. And we release it as a single. You know, it, it the music stuff. I don't know if you guys are seeing it much, but it, it, it the business is changing so rapidly that it, it's rather than wait, you know, five years, two years, you know, a year and a half to record a whole album, and put it out. There's a lot of stuff that can happen in that time, and people can forget. Sure. That, that what's going on, and so a lot of the bands anymore are releasing singles, and then you know once they get enough singles, then they'll release an album. Sure. So that's kind of what we have, have been doing uh, a little bit this last over the last little bit is uh, you know I'll get a song finished and we'll put it up. You know, hey, here's another one. Don't forget about it. Sure. And then you know we'll write another one and put it up. But now we, because of this concept album that I've got yeah. now, we're gonna stop doing the singles so that we can get the album finished. Yeah. And. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's one of the great things about the music business now. Is like, again, you know, I can record the thing and have it up in three days. Everybody in the world can hear it. Um, you know, my music producer said that's, you know, the Internet. The great thing about the Internet now is anybody can make a record. And the bad thing about the Internet now is anybody can make a yeah. record. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is true. Is sort of, that yeah. is true. Anybody can do a radio station. That is true. Yeah. Not everybody can do a good one. That's right. That's, exactly. that's the right. difference. Just because you own Photoshop doesn't mean you know how to get yeah, pictures. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with the music. I mean, the, uh, if anything else, it's just standing out above all of the noise, and that's the hard part. And what you guys are doing, playing our music, helps us get above what the noise oh, yeah. that a lot of the other bands are doing. We're glad to do it. So, so uh, when it comes to, like, people knowing you, are you guys pretty well known? I mean, around the USA, around the world, where's you know, your biggest market? It, it's weird. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at our Spotify plays, if you look at our um, old-time rock and roll, it's been it's been listened to on Spotify over three million times. Wow. So, I mean... And the numbers speak for that's, themselves. He's that's, sold over that's half worldwide. a million downloads for on iTunes. Yeah. So, but for the original show, uh, we sell a lot of stuff in Germany. We sell a lot of stuff in France. Um, there's a big Southern Rock thing that happens in Europe. Oh, wow. Um, well, I never figured that for Europe. More, they're more like rock and roll type of stuff. But I suppose everything's always changing, you know, yeah. when it comes to Southern but, Rock rocks, baby. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> but again, Tommy, we sell a lot in the United France, States, too. Southern, I mean, you know, we're based out of Southern <laughs> California, so our biggest draw is, is in Southern California. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. But, you know, we... Uh, we've got radio stations, terrestrial radio that's playing us in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We went back there for a big Southern Rock revival, the, the Outlaw Radio out there. Okay. Um, and so they play us, uh, the, our, our song Whiskey, that's kind of the single that okay. they play. Okay. Um, Good song. I've yeah. had Whiskey actually got picked up and it was in a, the TV show Point of Interest. Oh. Or Person of Interest on CBS. Okay. And I so haven't watched Jim major shows. Yeah, so we have, you know, we've got bands to do that. Okay. Um, do they contact you to use that then? Or? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, believe me, I, I'm all about the news. <laughs> it's one of the futures of the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, you know, we yeah, we've got we've got fans kind of all over the place, you know, and that's one of the frustrating things. I've got people in Georgia like, oh, you got to come to Georgia when you come to Georgia. <laughs> and hey, Brent, we'll be in Georgia, I promise. You. <laughs> <laughs> that's our friend that keeps asking. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but again, they're going to be there. <laughs> it's just like coming to South Dakota. You've got to be able to line up enough shows in a row to, to financially. Oh yeah. Feasible. I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot to get eight people from That's Southern California, motor home South like motor yeah. home yeah. from Southern California yeah, to Georgia, it's a, it's an and so it's a matter of, of getting yeah. enough of a demand that you can book the shows where it'll pay for itself. And that, okay. that's that's our biggest challenge. It's not so much that we don't have people that that are loving us all over the place, but it's getting them all together in one spot at one time that'll you know put down enough money so that we can sure. we can get up. I mean, and that's you know it is all about the music and stuff. And I hate to make it so so commercial but the, the fact of it is though it's you know it takes a lot to, to move this it's like a big circus you can't just you know you know yeah you, you've got to be able to pay to get everybody out there and you know we've got to eat when we get there yeah. you can tell we like to eat so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know this is radio right? yeah, yeah yeah well radio video a little bit of both I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we tour as much as we can and this year has been been our busiest year so far i mean the next two months are, we're just slammed we're leaving here. We're going to New Mexico. We're going up to Northern California. I mean, we've got we've got all over the place. I, not in Georgia yet, Brent, yeah. but we're working. Yeah. <laughs> so when it, when it comes to like playing gigs, like everybody has a certain type of game they like to play. You know, you, you know, you don't want to be known as just a fair band or, or like a uh, just a pool party band or whatever. You want to you know be known as you know like I've done concerts, I've done festivals, I've done all you know all types of stuff. What's your favorite type of concert to? to I did. If the people are having fun. That's my favorite. So it doesn't matter if it's it doesn't a three matter. day we, festival we, or whatever. Done, I, I, I played shows and you know, I opened for Leonard Skinner, there's a hundred thousand oh, people immersed in wow. a big, huge, one of the biggest country music festivals. And that was amazing, you know. But I played in people's backyards where everybody yeah. was just, you know, loving it. That it, it's so weird. People when I the more that I taste what the success of being in the music business is, the more I realize that it's not what everybody thinks. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. It's work. I mean, obviously. Yeah. You know. I mean, you know, we, we're going to play this huge, you know, uh, casino tonight. Yeah. We've got a concert in the park we're doing, you know, tomorrow. We've got another big festival the day after that. You know, and then when we get done with this, I know that we're doing, you know, a buddy of mine's birthday party. We're playing by his pool in his backyard. Huh. You know, but it's my favorite show is where people are, are digging it. And if they're digging it, I'm digging it. And you guys just love to entertain. That's absolutely. what it's all about. Yeah, we can see that. Oh, oh absolutely. And we yeah. can Sam, see the Sam closeness Sam. of the band too. That's that's cool in itself. We get that yeah. a lot. We, the guitar player and I were talking about that today. Steve Sinker. Uh, he and I have been playing together for 21 years, and uh, and we were talking about that today. That we do get those those comments a lot. That you know the band is like family. We were. I, I posted a picture on Facebook today of Steve and I up here at the uh, at the cemetery. We went up and saw the yeah, uh, Mount Moriah. Yeah, bet. right. And I put a picture up and I said, "21 years in the making." Well, a friend of mine, another mutual uh, uh, musician friend of mine, who's in another touring band that we that we run into on the road from time to time, uh, he he said something about, "Yeah, that's the same as me and well, his bass player. His name's Chewy." He goes, "That's the same as me and Chewy." He goes. Uh, his wife introduces me as his wife. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we are, we're tight, we're, we're you know. You've outlasted most marriages, those two guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, when we're on the road, man, we're, we're you know, it's, I, I don't know, I, I've heard other bands talk about how when they're on the road, it's like, you know, it's just about an individual person. It's, you know, oh, yeah, I go out on the road, do my thing, can't wait to get home. You know, when we go on the road, it's like everybody has something that they do and something they bring to the table. And then, you know, you, you watch each other's backs. You know, you leave in a hotel room and it's like, oh, dude, you forgot your guitar and you grab it. You don't just, oh, yeah, I saw your guitar. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Well, yeah, it's like it's it's like a yeah. teamwork yeah. effort. Well, yeah, and, and, and when you're living this close... You know, and traveling yeah. like this too, it is like a family where it's like you, you know, you you just have to you 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 get along, and sometimes when you you know you don't see eye to eye, you just kind of take a breather, and you yeah. know, 
it's you know just like sometimes you get mad at your brother. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's really tight and it's really close and it's it's a it's a very unique thing. You know, and I think everybody, I think everybody in the band kind of realizes that lightning doesn't strike twice. You know, you you know you may get in another band, you may do some uh, work and you may do some shows with another group, but you're not going to have you know that. Yeah, the average life, the average life expectancy of a band, according to Rolling Stone, is 11 months. Oh. And, and Sam, I, I call Sam the, the gentleman of rock, yeah. because people will stand in line to work for this guy. I, I've known him for about 20 years, and actually, I'm a booking agent as well. And I used to book Sam's country band. It was <laughs> it was my most successful country band for a lot of years. When they stopped doing country, I was I was in trouble. And and but the thing about Sam is he he really does have the integrity, and uh, the, I mean he just cares for his fans. He cares for his, his band members. And the people in, in this group, I'm one of the new guys, and I've been in the group for eight years. So, <laughs> I, I'm still considered a new guy. Oh, yeah. Geez. You know? And so uh, and that just doesn't happen in this industry. So it's a tribute to Sam. So who do you, uh, if you're a booking agent, who do you book with? Well, you know, I, this is not about me and, and booking. This is yeah. about Sam right now. But, you know, the thing is, I just want you to know that, that that's what integrity looks like. Right oh, now. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I paid it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, cash. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to, yeah, pure cash. Well, I guess you know, I just have a couple more questions, and then we'll we'll conclude with the interview. Sure. Uh, yeah, you know we what? Get ready for the show. With uh, with vinyl being the new thing, well, it's not newer, but it's it's coming back. Uh, do you think you guys will ever release anything on vinyl at all? I don't know. Or is it a little bit more effort? There's to, there's a lot more involved in doing that. I mean, it's it's a lot more expensive process. Like and not everybody's do doing it, you know, not, yeah. not, you, you can't, when I say not everybody's doing it, it's not like back in the day, you know, I, I remember years ago when I first moved to Los Angeles doing a record, and we cut it on vinyl, and we cut it at a place on, uh, uh, right by the Cat and the Fiddle over on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. a place called K-Disc, and it was a mastering house, and they also cut records, and we took it in there, and they cut our record for us, and we just went there because they were right there. We could have walked down the street and gone to 50 other places that would do it, you know. Um, and so nowadays, you know, if you want to find somebody that's going to cut a vinyl record for you, I mean, you got to do some searching, and they know that they're the only guy in town, and so it costs a ton of money. Yeah. You know, it really does. You know, and again, I mean, not to bring it back to the money thing, but you know, you when you're when you're selling product, it's like how many are, are we? How many of these vinyl records are we going to sell versus downloads? You know, and yeah. are we going to be sitting too, on it? Yeah, exactly. And the thing too is that a lot of people anymore don't think that they should have to pay for music. And you know that you can get everything you want for free on YouTube. And so it's like, I, I get it, you know, but you know, we get, we <laughs> we got to make a living. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Yeah, you're so, a band, but you know, yeah. but again, I mean, we've had the conversation before. Some of our Bob Seger CDs that we've done, we actually have physical CDs. You can buy them at our show tonight. But some of the Seeger CDs that we've released are, you know, they're just digital releases. Um, some of the SMB stuff we've released, like Something Strong, um, You Bet, some of those songs um, are just digital releases that we've done. Uh, some of the cover songs, we did a cover of uh, Born to Be Wild that's just a digital release. Sure. We did a cover of uh, Cool Stuff in the Rain. That's not out yet. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Did we edit? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, that, that's, that's actually one of the things no, I can't. Gotcha. I can't tell you that, that we're working on. We're actually yeah. doing a um, a Creedence Clearwater tribute. So we, oh, we've got a, a bunch yeah. of other stuff that we're Very recording good. right now. Sure, sure. That's, sure. that's uh, that sounded really cool. I mean, you know, and oh, I, yeah. again, with having a studio and being able to do this kind of stuff, you know, we can just do stuff that's fun that we want to. And you know, we're all big Creedence fans, and so. Credence and Seeger have that common scream thing that I know how to do, so it kind of, it kind of works. Buzzsaw. Yeah, Buzz try to do, do some Buddy Holly covers, too. And you don't hear enough of that. You never know. You know dude, I, that producer that I work with, he's had me record so many different things. We, we, he doesn't want to work with, with publishers and stuff, but they'll have us uh, re-record their stuff they have in their catalog for film and TV news. And oh, so, yeah. You know, if, if they have a master recording or something, but they need just a band only with no vocal. You know they can't get that, so we'll re-record re everything. Oh. You guys would be shocked at some of the stuff I've done. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Dude, I, I, uh, we did a whole album of stuff by the Love and Spoonful. I've done a whole album of. Uh, well, we're doing a bunch of Meatloaf songs right now. We're doing. Oh. A, I, I've done a bunch of Turtle songs. I've done. I've done the Archies, if you can believe that. 
You'll never find it, but I well, have you know, done it. <laughs> we have an upcoming interview where Frankie is going to interview Canned Heat. Oh, fantastic. Yes, tomorrow, yeah. the, the, lead, the original drummer. Oh, awesome. Canned Heat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. You guys ever work together with that band? No, no. Uh, Who was the drummer? Like, Pete Beetle LaFerra uh, or something like that. He's a Western guy, but he's, he's yeah, he's... Yeah, does ring a bell. Frito or Fido or something like that. That's a nickname, I guess. You know tomorrow. Oh, no, tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you uh, better know for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've done a little research over, but he said, I, I talked to their manager, Skip, and they said, this is the guy who was pretty much the original member of the historian of the band. So, oh, awesome. Oh, so he's great. the one to talk to, so it's like, okay. All right. Well, the doors at the show have, has opened 15 minutes ago, so uh, we're going to have to get in there pretty quick and get yeah. things rolling. Yeah, right. well, we appreciate but, it. Guys, thanks you so much yeah, for everything. Yeah, thank you, you so doing. much. I mean, thanks for coming down. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thursday Thursday night. Night. yeah. 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 some stuff. Yeah. 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 This, this, is, this is tremendous. This is yeah. tremendous. Oh, absolutely. Well, we appreciate the Sam Morris band and Turn the Page and everybody for participating. So, no worries. I'm Frankie Slauson. And the old rap, and we're out of here, baby. <laughs> we're we'll, out of here. And we'll see you again for another great rap and fire session. Oh, yeah? Ready for my close-up.